another superhero movie. I am completely burnt out on these things. I think we've pretty much done everything there is. Can't, it's time to move on to something else. Huh. But I suppose it is My Hero Academia, and there isn't much else in the theaters because, well, Democrats and Republicans have decided to trash the economy, and thus there isn't much to do besides go to your movie house and wait for the inevitable civil war because of their, because of their partisan selfish infighting. Anyway, so, let's take a look at this one. Here it is. Here it is, and I have to say, out of all the My Hero Academia movies, I think this is the best structured of the three. That said, this title makes no sense. There is no reason for this movie to have the title World Hero Force. Yes, the heroes are technically part of something called the World Hero Force, but it really plays no... It really plays no part in the story, so I don't even know why they bothered. I mean, they could have just as easily just had Deku on a vacation to fake a stan as having some new superhero team he's a part of, since it never becomes an issue. That being said, if you only... and all... so, you know... Ugh, I don't even know why they went with that other than I guess it sounds like an epic title, but, um... Anyway, this is the best of the My Hero Academia movies from a storytelling standpoint. It's very focused in that it has a handful of characters. It really doesn't focus on the teams or the supporting characters, so if you're coming to this to see your favorite supporting characters throw down epically, it really doesn't have that. It instead builds on things from the premise and it builds on the characters. There are a handful of supporting characters that well develops and the story is structured around them. In that way, to me, it feels much more like a late 90s, early 2000s superhero movie than it does like a modern one where they throw in everything but the kitchen. Everything and the kitchen sink. Which is a good thing if you ask me. Because I consider late 90s or early 2000s to be a sort of golden age for how for how well superhero movies were written in that in that yes those movies there's less spectacle in them but oftentimes they're taking one or two characters and just focusing on them and their relationships drive the conflicts and that's what moves the story forward not some epic universe spanning plot and I actually find that a lot easier to get into and get invested in and yeah, I wasn't sure how invested I was going to be in this movie going in, but I really liked it. I really liked it um, for that reason. It's also a very typical Hitchcock wrong man type story. And if you don't know what that is, Hitchcock loved doing stories where the everyman gets thrown into world gets thrown into world changing events or some or something like that, something very important, but he has no idea why. He's, he's gotten dragged into it through a simple mistake. He's the wrong man. He's been mistaken for somebody. He gets a hold of something he wasn't supposed to by mistake. In this case, there's a supporting, there's a main character that the story kind of revolves around who accidentally, who accidentally gets a hold of a wrong suitcase and thus he ends up being chased all around the world and Deku's helping him. The villains try to frame Deku for murder, although that also doesn't really go anywhere because Deku, because they're only able to frame him for murder in one country, so in one fake, in one fake country, so Deku just crosses the border to the neighboring fake Eastern European country sort of thing, so all's good there. Again, that feels like wasted time, so, but again, other thing, but again, the rest of this is so well focused, this isn't just them throwing spectacle up on the screen, and, and most of it isn't devoted to big fights, it's devoted to small character moments and the details of how they, how they are on the run. Again, it feels very late 90s in that way, and I actually 
very much like that as a change of pace from your normal My Hero Academia story and the past two films. It's a, it's a very nice, very much more personal thing. I don't want to give away too many spoilers, but it does, but it revolves around some conflicts I can actually understand. It revolves around some, some issues that have been in the My Hero Academia universe from the beginning, which is, first of all, how does it feel to be one of the 20, you know, I mean, they kind of explored that with Deku for a while, but, but also, well, well, what does it feel like to be one of the 20% of normal people who are um, being replaced, who are being, you know, replaced by the supers slowly as the same, as time goes on, and all, uh, and also they have a they have a villain who whose quirk isn't just a random power quirk just designed to beat Deku up. It, it is a perfectly designed quirk, and this is how intricate, the, and this is how good the writing is. It's it's not only perfectly designed as the perfect way to fight back, uh, to make him a challenge for Deku, but it also, and the fight is a one-on-one -on -one this time, which I like because I prefer my, I prefer the climaxes of my movies to come down to one character or one care to one character against another and their ideologies clashing and the way they view the world clashing and be and that being reflected in the fight and that's certainly the case here and the the quirk is actually not only the perfect one to challenge Deku but it also makes perfect sense how the villain got to where he is now and why he thinks he has to do what he has to do because he has this quirk it's actually kept him from ever being having to be touched being able to be touched by another human being. And they've done studies where they found that humans that are not touched by other humans, your brain goes completely psycho. So this guy's brain has gone somewhat completely psycho. But then they also have a point about hard work. And that's the thing that separates My Hero Academia from a lot of the Marvel movies and DC stuff is these guys, oh, they're just special and they're just told how special they are from the beginning. No, they may have powers, but it's how hard they work with those powers that is show that makes them different. And that's what the end, and that's in the end what becomes the difference between Deku. They make it clear that that's the difference between Deku and this villain. If this villain had worked as hard to make things be better and to put and had pushed himself as hard as Deku did, this villain would have been able would have been able to cancel out his quirk and he would have had a much better life and he wouldn't be doing these villainous things now and I think that's an interesting um, thing to put in a movie nowadays and we're just not seeing that in our culture or anywhere else so again My Hero Academia continues to be the superhero franchise that I would show kids today over pretty much anything else because it actually had because when it decides to have a moral lesson, it's not some, it's not some empty platitude, and they and they actually, re, and they actually show it as part of the story rather than just giving it to you at the end and saying that was the lesson after you've had a bunch of mindless spectacle. But yeah, there isn't as much spectacle, and so this might not be to everyone's taste. But I found this a much more focused, much better movie than the previous two My Hero Academia movies, and I enjoyed those for what they were. And um, if you only see one superhero movie this year, make it this one. Either see it in theaters, it's still playing, or, or you know, when it comes to streaming or, or Blu-ray, see it there. But it's, but it's definitely worth your time. So, uh, hope you found this review enlightening, and uh, hope it and I hope I expressed um, just what I liked about this movie. So, see you next time.